If you would state your full name. Bruce Timothy Blake. You may inquire. Uh, Mr. Blake, where did you reside in September of 2000, August and September of 2012? There's 1940 Smith Drive. I'm going to show you uh, an image that's been marked as State's Exhibit 5. Uh, what I want to know is if you recognize it, the image, and then if you recognize where your residence at that time would be. Yes, it's all to the left. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a laser pointer. Do you recognize the drive and Lee Apple? That's the light. Yeah, yeah mine's off to the left. You gotta get the, the beam going. Yeah, mine's off to the left right there. That's Smith and that's Lane. Yeah. Mine's off to the left. Okay, you don't see it, so you're not seeing it on this image. Unless I'm messed up for exactly where I'm at. All right. Well, if um Oh well, no mine's right there. Okay. You All recognize right. it now? Yeah, it took me a minute to get my bearings. Prior to uh, the early morning of September 3rd, 2012, how long had you lived in that residence on Smith Drive? Three, four months. Okay. And um, did you know your neighbors? Did you know your neighbors that lived just to the uh, next house over towards Lane Avenue? Yes. And who were your neighbors on that that address on Smith Street? Gary Hemby and Roger Picor. Okay. <clears throat> and then across Lane Avenue, did you know your neighbor that lived there? Yeah, Billy Woodward. Okay. Do you see uh, William Theodore Woodward in court with us here today? Yes, I do. Can you point to him and describe what he's wearing? Right there, the black coat. All right. And what color hair does he have? Silver. All right. Let the record reflect the witnesses identified uh, the defendant. Did you know Mr. Woodward before you moved into the residence? No. Did you know Mr. Hembry before you moved into the no, residence? No, I did not. Who were you residing in that residence with? My wife and children. Now, I want to ask you, um, prior to uh, September 3rd, September 2nd, had there been um, issues between uh, Mr. Hembry, Mr. Woodward, or you and Mr. Woodward, or your wife and Mr. Woodward, Several, okay. yeah, but month and a half's worth, or maybe more. Okay. Were you present when Mr. Woodward had uh, the police come over about a present that had been taken from his porch? Yes, I was present. Okay. Where were you at your house, or how? Yeah, I was in the front yard of my house. Okay. And. What did you observe? What did you see happen? I don't want to get into the words, but how were people behaving? It was just uh, the cops would go there. They talked to Gary about one of his daughters. I don't know. I wasn't really that close. And then uh, Gary got mad. You know, they asked Billy, what is this about? And then Billy got mad, and then they, the cops calmed everything down. Okay. Now, after that occurred, had there been, um, did everyone in the neighborhood know or recognize that Mr. Woodward had some chickens over behind his house? Yes, I think everybody knew about that. Okay. And 
did anything, to your knowledge, did anything happen with those chickens after this incident between Mr. Hembry and Mr. Woodward involving Mr. Hembry's daughter? I think one of them, I don't know where it was, one of them had called code enforcement on them. Okay. So you don't, you don't know what happened, but did the chickens leave? Yes, I, as far as I was told, it was. Yeah. All right. Did you? And I'm not. I don't want to get into hearsay. So, yeah. did you? Did you personally become aware that there were no longer chickens over at the Woodward residence? I did. I didn't see no more. Okay. Had you seen them before? Yeah. And how many chickens had you seen over there? Oh, no, I don't know exactly how many. Okay. Was it more than ten or less than ten? It was probably right around there, ten or something like that. I don't know exactly how many. Okay. Now, um, were you present when there was any uh, communication between Mr. Hembry and uh, Mr. Woodward about the chickens? I may have been, but I don't remember no conversation standing out. Okay. Did um, you observe the relationship between uh, the Hembrys and the Woodwards and the Blakes and the Woodwards deteriorate or get worse after after this these things that I've just described? The, oh, oh yes, yes. Okay. It was an everyday thing. All right. Now. Was this a one-way thing, or was it back? No, no, it was back and forth. It was, it was just as much one as it was the other. Was there was there a point where uh, your wife made threats against the the children of Mr. Woodward? Yeah, she had said something. I was out there cleaning the boat. And she had said something to the effect about one of Billy's daughters. Okay. And was it uh, a threat to have the daughter uh, raped by a man? I think so. Okay. Did that happen? No, it didn't happen. I mean, no, I'm talking about that statement happened. Yes. The act didn't happen. No, the statement did. All right. Who else was present during that? Uh, I think Kim was there. Billy was there. It was. The other William was there. Okay, the father, the uh, Mr. Woodward's father. Uh, I don't know if he was there or not. I can't remember if okay, he. Was. You said the other William. So the I'm one that lives down the street. I can't. I don't forgot his last name. Okay. So there was there was a group of people there that were all adults. Yes. When in that? When did that happen? In relation to. Uh, this shooting, how long before it? Oh, I don't know, two, two, three weeks, maybe? Okay. Or, I don't, I can't tell you exactly when. At least that long or better. Okay. Now, did this happen, where, where did, was this in the street? Or yes, where? in the paid road on Smith. Now, were there other incidents after that? Numerous. And um, were you involved in some of those? Some of them, I think so. All right. And what do you recall doing? Uh, it was just mostly hollering, yelling back and stuff. He would holler and yell. We would yell back. It was a... Okay. Were there... Was there bad language used? Oh, well, yes. Was there threats used? I would imagine. Okay. All right. Do you remember if this was during the day or at night? Both. Now, did um, did there come a point in time where you 
went to a hearing about an injunction where there was people trying to get an injunction against the Woodwards and there were, I think it was your wife and Miss Cast and the Woodwards were trying to get an injunction against you or Mr. Hembree? Yes. Okay. And um, was that after this situation had continued for a period of time? Yes. And after the hearing, did you and your wife leave? Yes, we went home. Right. Did, so you weren't present for any incidents that occurred in the parking lot afterwards? No. I was at home. How long was that before this shooting happened? Two weeks, maybe. I don't know the exact dates. Okay. So it, there was some time that passed from the from the injunction, injunction hearing. To the shooting. Yes. All right. It was not the next day deal, no like that. All right. Were you aware that Mr. Woodward had put up a security camera, a camera? Yes. Did, when did you become aware of that? I, I, I think I've seen him putting it up. Okay. Did Mr. Hembree know about the security camera? As far as I know, he did. Did Mr. Score know about the security camera? As far as I know, he did. All right. Did everybody that... Uh, that was associated with those two houses. Did pretty much everybody know about that? Yes. Okay. Did um, you and Mr. Thor and Mr. Hembree uh, say things knowing that those things were being recorded? I'm, I'm sure we did. Did you, did you, I need to know if it's you, were you aware that uh, someone mooned the camera and, and said things? Were you aware of that? Have you seen that? Uh, I don't remember that. Okay. I, I've only heard it, but I, I don't exactly remember that. Okay. So you weren't, you weren't a part of that? No, I don't. Okay. I want to move to the, because all the things I've talked about so far is that before this shooting happens. Yes. I want to, I want to talk about the night before the shooting, because the shooting actually is in the morning. Yes. Um, had there been any issues or disagreements with the Woodwards on the 2nd of September? Yes, I'm quite sure that was that. I'm quite sure there was things because it happened every day. Okay, and what types of things would those? It was just hollering back and forth. Okay, that went on every day. Did uh, well? Were you present for it, or are you just assuming that it happened? No, I was present. You would hear it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you recall saying anything? To uh, towards the Woodward residents or towards the Woodwards that evening going into the early morning? I don't remember exactly. What, well, I don't remember yelling right straight at Billy's house. I remember us, the, we had a cookout and a party deal going over there. All right. But it was. Do you remember anyone yelling at Billy's house? I don't know if there was, I imagine a couple of times it were, but. Okay. Now, um, well, I don't want you to imagine, do you remember one way or the other? Yes, there was things said. Okay. Do you remember today what was said? No. All right. Where were those things said from? From Gary Jordan. Do you recall going, o going on to Billy's prop 
property or Mr. W I'm sorry, Mr. Woodward's property at any time. No. And saying anything. No. All right. Do you recall threatening to fight Mr. Woodward? No. Did you call he or his family names? No, I did not. I don't think I did. No, I did not. All right. What do you think you did? I don't. It was, we was just it was hollering and and there wasn't much attention paid towards Billy's house. Okay. All right. Now I want to talk about um, what was going on in the time before I realized there was a party and it had been going on for some time. Had it not? Yes. All right. And were your children at the party? Well, they was there at the house. Yes. Okay, how old were they? They were, what, seven and twelve, I think. Okay. Were they outside? They were outside, so yeah. Right. Now, where were they in the hour or so before the shooting? Were they still outside? No, they were inside. Now, had you been drinking that... Uh, that evening yes. going into the morning? Yes. And uh, how affected were you by alcohol? Probably pretty good affected. I've been drinking for um, three, four hours probably. Okay. So you felt you were impaired? Oh, yes. Do you feel you were beyond impaired? Did it like the front? Objection. Sustained rephrase. Okay. Let me ask you, um, how impaired do you think you were? I mean, I was drunk, wasn't falling over drunk, nothing like that. But you were, you I was not legal to drive nothing. Okay. All right. Do you remember where you were before this happened? Do you remember where where you were at? Yeah, I just. I just walked inside the house and I got a cigarette and I turned out and walked out and then that's when it happened. Okay. And tell us what you what you remember. I walked in, I got a cigarette, and I come outside and I made it almost to my truck. Then I heard the first shot and I looked up to see what I was then I heard two more and then I started feeling them. And then that's when Billy was just standing there shooting me. Then I went down and he went over towards Gary's house. Gary come outside to see what was going on, and he run right straight up on Billy, and Billy just started shooting him. So I heard the clip fall. Then he loaded another one and shot Gary some more. Then he come back over to me, shot me four or five more times. And then he went back and shot Roger once. And then he come back to me, and it was it was no it was empty. Okay, and that's what you remember happening. As, as best as I can remember, that's what I remember. Okay. Do you remember being um, outside in the yard before you'd gone in the house? I mean, so you, I, you, just, you told us you went into the house. I went in the house and, and got a cigarette, and then where had you been before that? Been standing right there beside my truck. Okay. Do you recognize that image? Yes. Okay. And where do you recall standing before? Before you, so in that area? Right. Okay. Now, had you, were you by yourself or were you with anybody? Um, I think Justin was there and Roger was there. And I think two or three of the other kids were in the yard. Okay. And do you recall what you were discussing? I think we was, I think I'd brought out a fishing lure to show Justin, one of my offshore fishing lures. Okay. Now, um, but you're not sure. I can't exactly remember. It, but that's, I think that's what I had went there and got that lure and got a cigarette and come walk back out to show Justin. Okay. Now, um, did you have any, uh, anything in your hands when you were being shot? No, I think I dropped everything. Okay. What do you think you dropped? 
If I had that fish gore, that's the only thing I had in a cigarette. Okay. I don't even know if I got there lighted. I don't even remember that. Okay. Do you remember where you were shot at? I mean, where, where you were located when you were shot? What, as far as where I was at the house? Yeah. I was just right in front of the... I was right in front of the truck. Okay. And do you remember where you went? I went down. Okay. Do you remember where you were laying? I was laying right in front of the truck. Okay. And do you remember anyone coming to help you? My, um, Kim had run over uh, after Gary was shot. And then and Kim come over, and then I just I remember just laying there with my eyes closed for a while, and then I remember Scott Blizzard, the okay. policeman there, quick somehow or another. Okay. Do you remember communicating with uh, Officer Blizzard? Some. I just remember seeing him and him telling me everything was going to be all right. Okay. Do you recall what you told him as far as who did this to you? Yes, I told him who done it. Okay. And who did you tell him did it? Billy Woodward. Okay. The person you earlier identified here? Yes, sir. Is that the person that shot you? Yes, sir. Now, were you able to actually, were you, you're on the ground, and, yes. you're, and you're able to see over to... I had set up thinking I was going to be able to move because it really wasn't hurting. And then when he... Shot Gary this morning, and he come over there to me. That's when I went back, and that's when I felt concrete busting right by my face. Okay. He shot me some more, and then I just started crawling towards the back door. All right. And is that where you ended up? Is near yes. the back door? The back door. Now this this uh, place, the residence that you had where you were shot, is is that located in? Uh, Titusville, Brevard County, Florida. Yes. Mr. Blake, I want to show you what the mark is. Stacy to his AP first. Mm -hmm. Ask if you recognize that image. Yes. Okay. Now, you didn't see that when the yellow markers were there. No. If I understood your previous testimony, uh, this would be the area where uh, the fishing lure, if you had one, uh, would have been dropped? Yeah, if it would, if I'd have had one, that's where it, it would have been somewhere around in there. Okay. Just so I. Can you look at these together? Yeah, you may. I expect that when we introduce those in, he can do that on cross. This is not the time it's for an objection to an exhibit. The objections overruled. You may continue with your next question, Mr. Eisenmayer. Any of these pictures show the fishing board? Oh, I didn't look for that. No, I don't see it unless it went up under the truck or something. 
I'm not that I know. I mean, after I was shot, I don't know what happened there. Okay. Notwithstanding that, I won't object. Okay. Can you tell us what we're looking at in this image? Hey, that's my driveway and carport. Okay. And is the area where you recall first being shot located in that image? Yes, it's right there. Okay. And is that at the past the front of your car? Yes, yeah, right there at the front. Okay. And where is it that you believe? Did you go down there? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I went down there after about the third or fourth one. Okay. And then um, I'm going to show you what's been marked as states exhibit eight. What's that image showing? That's my carport. All right. And is the door to your residence visible? Yes. Where's that? Right there. Okay. And um, is the location, you said that you moved from where you were initially, where did you move to? I just fell down like along in there and then crawled to the door. I couldn't get back up. I'm going to show you exhibit 19. Does that show where you ended up? Yeah, that's where I ended up. Okay. Right there where the clothing is on the floor? Yeah. All right. And is that the doorway we looked at in the other exhibit? Yes, sir. Same doorway? I don't have any other questions. It was taken down. Well, I remember the duct tape down. So remember the duct tape down. Was it presents or was it duct tape? I remember it. But evidently what I said back then was duct tape. It was something off the front porch. Exactly what it was, I don't know. Well, it was a pretty big deal. I mean, that kind of whole relationships. Yours, your wife's, the Hembrys, this cast. Mr. Picciore, all the relationships kind of fell apart over this one incident, right? Then that's what started, yes. <laughs> pretty much went that's downhill from there, right? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, but you're saying you can't even remember what started it? Well, it was that. Did Billy just blame Gary's daughter for something getting taken off the front porch? Exactly what was taken off the front porch? I don't know exactly what it was. Or what one person was calling it or what the other person was calling it. Okay. Well, as you sit here today, was it duct tape or was it presents? I, I, remember, I remember saying duct tape back then. It might have been, we'll call it duct tape. I don't remember exactly what it was now. Okay. So this accusation that the daughter would have taken something like duct tape got Gary so upset that he got furious, screaming and yelling. Billy, right? Billy, Mr. Yes, there was some word exchange. Yes, I don't know when they say screaming, mad, and furious. He asked Billy why he accused his daughter. Well, again, let's look at line seventy-nine. See if you can remember what you said about how Mr. Henry reacted on that. Looking at line twelve. Didn't you say that Mr. Henry was yelling and screaming right there, which he had never done before? Page 79, line 12 through 14. Yeah, that's what I said, Dean. Okay. So Mr. Henry was yelling and screaming about this. They must have been. Okay. Now, you actually weren't involved in any of that directly, were you? No. But your relationship with Mr. Woodward deteriorated from that point on too, didn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Now, prior to that, uh, Mr. Woodward treated you pretty well, hadn't he? Yeah, we were real good friends. All right. I mean, he loaned you money when you needed to pay your rent, helped you out when things were tough for you. Yes. And yet you let all that go because of this uh, Mr. Henry being upset that Mr. Woodward suggested his daughter may have taken something.
production from this port, right? No, no. No? No. It was after that when the yelling and the screaming and Billy doing the, to the other, the yelling and screaming too. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was just as much him as it was the other ones. Oh, well, that's interesting. Um, oh, it is. When was he doing his yelling and screaming? Whenever he wanted to. He'd done it all the time, just like everybody else would. Right? Was he at or near his house when he was doing that? Yes. So all of his yelling and screaming would have been caught on the surveillance camera that you knew was set up, right? Yes. Unless he had it all. But that was just as much one side as it was the other. So the fact, have you ever seen any surveillance video at all from the time you knew that was on? Anybody ever show you any surveillance video where Mr. Woodward was yelling and screaming at you all? Nobody showed me that. No. But you saw a lot of video. I saw you it all in real life. That's what I saw. Okay. I saw it in real life. I don't need a videotape. I got it right here, a videotape. Well, it's convenient that it wasn't captured on video, isn't it? Convenient that it was captured on video. It was not captured on video. I, I don't know who has control over that. I see. Well, you did see a lot of video of you all yelling and screaming at the Woodwards, didn't you? you saw it at that hearing. You saw it at other times, didn't you? You the, saw the, the video. video didn't you? I didn't see no video no other times in that hearing. Okay. Well, you saw it a lot at that hearing. Yes. Okay. And all of the yelling and screaming that you saw on the video at that hearing, that was one way. Mr. Woodward didn't yell or scream a thing at any of y'all on that video, did he? No, not on that one. No. no but you, you, earlier that afternoon, he was. Okay. Were you aware of the fact that all of the video was turned over to law enforcement? I would imagine it would be. Okay. Is it surprising to you that no video showed up that showed any yelling and screaming on behalf of the Woodwards? Oh, is that from your group? No. No. Well, let's talk a little bit about what some of the videos show. Now, the state asked you about uh, a situation where you heard somebody threatening to have Mr. Rubin's 12 year old daughter, Ava, kidnapped, raped, sodomized. You were there, right? Yeah. Now, I think you told the state that um, the answer to it was, you think so, that something like that was said. Yes. You know so, that was said, don't you? Yeah, there was something to that effect said, yes. Well, it was said first by Carrie Capps, wasn't it? I don't She's think exactly know which one said it first. Well, let me refer you to page 81 of your prior testimony. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm sorry, Kim Cass, Carrie, what? Kim Cass, but page 81, yeah. line six. Starting with the question, line four. Okay, but what I said, it was Kim said first. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We can't talk at the same time. Right. We right. can't talk over one another, okay? So I'll ask the defense counsel to make sure that you let him finish, and sir, you also need to wait before you respond so that Mr. Eisenhower can ask yes. any questions. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. You recall being asked a question that were you present when somebody in your group of friends, the Henrys, the Picuers, your wife, yourself, or Miss Cass, threatened to have um, Ava Sodomized? And you said, yes, I remember when that was said. Do yes. you remember that? Yes. And you remember being asked, who was it that said that? Yes, sir. And your answer was, I'm not sure. I think it was Kim that said it first, and then Carrie kind of went with it, too. That's what I said. Okay. And then do you remember having a recollection reflash with the video, looking at a video? Yeah, I remember looking at the video. Okay. And that, at that point in time, that made it clear who said what, right? Yes. Okay. And it was Kim first, and then Carrie said it. Added to it, actually, right? Yeah, that's what I said back then. It's, that's, I probably remember it better back then than I do now. Okay. Well, isn't it a fact that Kim Cass said, 
I'm going to hire somebody to fuck your daughter in the ass. It was something along, I don't remember verbatim, but it was something along that line, yeah. And then your wife, Carrie Blake, said, we're going to get a big black guy to get to do it to her. Something right? along that line, yes. And I think you testified back then that your reaction was that was over the top, right? Yeah, I remember saying something like that, over the top, off the chain or something. That you got me mad for them saying. And I'm sure you apologize for that, right? Yes. Or ask them to apologize. Well, I told them to, and I told them it was stupid. As best as I can remember, unless I said something different here. I can't remember exactly what I said, but Well, and back then you said you told them to shut up. Okay. Okay. Uh, but again, you saw that video, and amazingly enough, that was captured on the video at the same time their comments were, right? I guess, yes. Now, that video does show Mr. Woodward reacting to that, getting angry over that statement directed at his daughter, right? Yes. That's the kind of thing that would make somebody angry, right? Well, yes. Is that what you mean by him giving back as good as he got? That he was angry over somebody threatening to have his daughter kidnapped, raped, and sodomized? Oh, yes. I went in and he got pissed. Mm -hmm. And that's an example of him giving as good as he got, right? No, there's a whole bunch more. I see. Okay. Well, At that point in time, clearly the surveillance video was already out, right? Yes. We knew, knew that. And that was, you said, two to three weeks before the so shooting incident? I don't remember exactly how long it was before. So for two to three weeks, you all were making statements to the Woodwards, directed to the Woodwards, that you knew were being captured on video. Is that right? Yes, we were making a statement the same way he was. Well, we already talked about the, but again, convenient. Your statements showed up on video, but nothing from them on that video. Yeah, well, imagine that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Let's talk about September 3rd. If I understood your testimony, you were saying that y'all weren't paying much attention for building Mr. Woodward's house at all. Is that right? I'm not saying at all. I mean, there were some things said, but it was a... <laughs> well, are you not saying it now? Because you sure said it to the state during the rep. Uh, I just yeah, two minutes. Was, there was things said, but the whole night was not devoted to y'all and yelling over there. Billy. Well, was there a lot of attention being paid toward Mr. Woodward's house or not? Yes or no? There was some. Some. Okay. And you were part of the group that was doing it, right? Yeah, some. I wasn't out there the whole time. I wasn't out there just hollering and yelling at Billy's house. No, we was, we was over there eating and drinking and... Eating and drinking? Come yeah. over, yell a little bit, go back, eat and drink some more, burn something, head back, make another threat. That was a calm I believe. So. Were you there during the burn? I believe I was. Okay. Were you one of the persons that were shouting white collar and burn baby burn? No, I don't I don't know about that. You don't know about that? I don't know exactly who was shouting that. You heard that, didn't you? I don't know. I, I don't remember now exactly what I heard. Well, let's talk about where this was. And you say it's palm front. Uh, I believe it was palm front, I'm not sure. Pretty big palm frog if it was, because it made a pretty big flame, right? It made a little fire. Right. 
And you also were present when a threat by your wife had been made toward the Woodwards to burn down their house while they slept, right? That had happened in an earlier occasion. Oh, well, I don't remember that one. You were not present during that one? I'm not saying I wasn't present, but I'm saying I don't remember it as of now. I don't remember it. So, threatening to burn somebody's house while they sleep is something that didn't stick with you. Wouldn't that, of course not. Of course not. Why would anybody get upset by that, right? <coughs> I don't remember nobody threatening to burn down nobody's house. Well, let's talk about, while they're looking for that in your prior testimony, let's talk about whether or not you were part of this. Uh, and take you back around 9 o'clock. Sunday, September 2012, mm -hmm. night of this part. Were you there when somebody was standing across the street from the Woodward's house? You know, ain't gonna take no shit. And singing out a modified version of a simple man. Singing out, I take a big tall tree and a short piece of rope and hang him high and let him swing until the sun goes down. Eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. You better watch where you go and remember where you've been. The way I see it, I'm a simple man. In my house, I got a 12 gauge shotgun waiting on the other side. I have to fight. Fight! Put him on their knees and tie him to a stump. Blow him the fuck away. Shot! Eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. You better remember, you better watch where you go and remember where you've been. That's the way I see it. I'm a simple man. Are you there when that was being? I uh, probably would. Okay. You recall who was doing that? That uh, probably was me. Hmm. Any good song? It's a Charlie Daniels song I've known all my life. Well, not all the lyrics are Charlie Daniels. Some of them are yours, right? Some of them are put in there, yeah. I mean, particularly the blow the fuck away. Charlie Daniels didn't have that in his lyrics, did he? No. Now, you were directly across the street from the Woodward's house, facing their house, yelling those lyrics out at the Woodward's house, right? No, I don't remember that. I don't exactly remember exactly where I was. Right here. Well, you're saying that that wasn't directed at the Woodward's? Is that what you're saying? I wasn't directing it at the word we're doing to I was just... Just having fun? Yeah. I mean, that's a jolly type of thing to sing out to somebody. Uh, you know, we're going to fight you and blow you the fuck away. That, that's a friendly type thing, right? I don't know if it was verbatim that that word was... Well, what was it if it wasn't verbatim oh, that those words? Remember. I don't remember. That. Well, what was your purpose in doing that? I was just out there singing. Just for the fun. Yeah. And you didn't need them to take anything about it, right? No. You didn't expect them to take that as a serious threat, no. did you? So, I mean, no. you'd be surprised if anybody actually took you seriously and thought that you were threatening to do harm to them. There was nobody here fixing to do no harm to nobody over there. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Woodward should have understood that because of the way you had acted in the previous 30 days leading up to this. Yelling and screaming threats at them, uh, having people in your group threaten to break them, their family, and things of that nature. That would lead them to believe you were just joking, right? No, no, that, as far as what Kim and Carrie said, that, well, I, had, I got that squashed right then. That was, that was stupid. That was way over the line. There wasn't. There wasn't no more that to to ask for more threats and all was coming just from him. Uh-huh. From the courthouse on. Well let's talk about some more on the September second.
trail at 1030, where you parted the group that was standing out in front of the Woodward's house, yelling, Fucker! Come on out! Come on, let's get him out. You get him out, I'll fight him. Fight! Fight to the death! Yeah, Roger. That motherfucker, you get it? I'll fight him to the death. That was when they was wrestling in the yard. That was Just, when they were wrestling in the yard? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not standing right across the street from the Woodward. No, that's when they were wrestling in the yard with all the kids. All the kids? What kids? There was quite a bunch of kids out there. And all of them were jumping on Justin. So Justin, when you say and Justin, Justin, you mean Justin Picciar? Yeah. So Justin Picciar and was wrestling. Roger was out there wrestling too. So and all the kids were jumping on him and they were telling him, get him, get him, get him, get him. That's what that, that's what that was about. But it surprised me that Justin just testified there wasn't wrestling. Objection. I, hold, hold on, sir. There's an objection. On a legal basis. So you're saying that those comments, even the, first of all, have you seen that section of the video and where the group of people are standing that are saying that? I don't remember. Okay. And you're saying that that's directed toward conduct of just involving Justin Picciar, right? Well, he was there at Preston, the other kids were dressed, all the kids and just were jumping on Roger and all of them, they were saying, get him, get him, get him, get him, and jump on him. Well, I'm a little confused. The yelling is, get him out, and I'll fight him. If they're all there, how do you need to get anybody out? I do not know. Hmm. And you're saying that these kids, the language that's being used is, that motherfucker, you get him out, and I'll fight to the death. That's the kind of language that the kids are using? Well, I think the little kids, there was a couple of teenagers there. I can't remember exactly how who was ever there from 9.30, 10.30, something like that. Then it thinned out as it got later. Isn't it a fact that you're the person that said you get him out and I'll fight him to the death? No, no I don't remember that. And didn't you also say that I've got white knuckles and I can, I've done it before? No, I don't remember saying that. Well, didn't you acknowledge at in that hearing you're the person that made the white knuckle statement? I may have, I don't recall. If I can find it for you. All right. Page six. Could you turn to page 136? Okay. Do you remember being Play the video clip. Yes. You answering, I heard myself, I've done it plenty of times. See how white my knuckles is? That's all I could hear. I don't know what I was talking about. Yeah, that's what I said. Okay. Now that white knuckle statement was made in conjunction with the statement, you get him out and I'll fight him to the death, wasn't it? I don't remember. I don't... Are you Well, what is the context of how white your knuckles are? How does that factor in to these kids wrestling? I don't remember. Well, white knuckles would seem to indicate some sort of scar tissue on your knuckles, showing that you've been, you were a fighter and you fought plenty of times. Isn't that true? No. No. What does it mean then? I, it was just an expression of something I said. Well, I, it's your expression. What does it mean? I don't know. It was just something I said that night. So I have not been in a lot of fights. I have got no white knuckle. I've got no scar up nothing except a bullet hole. Well, fight to the death. Were you planning on having a gun fight? No. There was no. no guns to have a gun fight with. Knife fight? No, I don't plan on having a knife fight. Baseball bat? No. I don't have no baseball bat fight. Using your shark killer? No, I'm going to use that one as fishing. So you're just planning on beating them to death? I hope I'm planning on doing nothing. Well, how do you fight to the death? What, what are you going to do with 
was talking about the wrestling. That's all, that's all I remember. So you can fight some kids in the death. Now, do you recall a few moments ago you told us that uh, it was your recollection that a palm frond was being burned? Is that right? I believe that's. I believe that's what it was. Okay. Now, do you, and you can refer to page one fifty of your testimony in prior proceedings. One fifty. One five zero line eleven. Probably being asked a question, referring to some prior testimony. Mr. Blake, right up there, earlier you told us nothing was being burned. And he said, uh huh. You call that? Yes. And well, he see said, it. isn't that in fact something correct? Now, do you recall your testimony today, if I understood it correctly, that the only burning incident you 
can recall is this palm front that you talked about today. Yes, correct? Yes. Isn't it a fact that there was another incident of burning where people were yelling slash and burn? I don't remember that. Yeah, but you look at page 157 of your testimony. Give me one second. Uh, starts at line two with the playing of the clip. And the attorneys may approach for a moment, please. You may proceed. Again, so it's clear, <clears throat> sir, what I'm asking you to do is to read page 157, starting at line two. You can read all of that page. Uh, and through the next page, see if that refreshes your recollection about whether or not there was another situation where slash and burn was used by members of your group. Another burning one. Exactly remember or I recall the video of what was. I don't recall that now. Okay. You saw a video then, but you don't recall it now. That's that's two right. years ago. Yeah, that's right. I don't recall what was on there. All right. Now, earlier uh, in your testimony, you indicated you did not remember a threat of threatening to uh, burn the Woodward house down with his family. Uh, was asleep. Do you recall that testimony? Right. Could you refer to page 212 of your testimony? I'm sorry, Mr. Resnier, what is the question? 212. No, what is the question? The question is regarding whether or not he recalled the threat to burn the Woodward house down when his family was asleep. Yes, Are you asking him that question? I'm just asking that and he acknowledged he said it earlier. I'll repeat that. I, that. That was my recollection of what he just said. You recall testifying a few moments ago that you did not recall any threat to burn the Woodward house down while they were asleep. Yes. Could you look at page 212, please? Okay. What line? Starting at line three. Does that refresh your recollection about the I, I don't I don't remember actually saying this or, uh, or stomping that fire out. I guess it did if that's what I said then. But. Okay. I mean you acknowledged at that point in time you remember the threat. As a matter of fact, after the burning incident. Uh, I didn't say I remember the threat. Hold on, hold on, folks. Well, let me back up. Hold on. Do you recall testifying that during this burning incident that you went out and objection to the reading the transcript or putting these things? That's not the objection. That's the proper question. Did you stop the fire out when they were burning? This says here that I did. And the reason that you stamped the fire out was because of this earlier threat and you thought that that burning crossed the line. I that's what you said then, right? But that's what I said then, but I, I do not remember now.
Now, the night of the second, there were other instances, short of actual burning something, where people, including yourself, were walking around with lighters and holding up the lighters and talking about what you were going to do, right? I don't remember that. You recall while you were holding up the lighter, <clears throat> man walking up to you and asking you, saying, "What are we doing over here?" No, I do not recall it. You recall a discussion about what you're going to do if the police come, and the discussion is, "We'll make it up. We can just make it up as we go." I said, "We just make it up. What the motherfucker is he going to do?" Then shouting at the Woodward House, fuck you, bitch. No, I do not remember that. Is it your testimony that if that's on the video, that's not you involved in that group? You're not one of them. I, I don't know. I don't remember. No, I don't. Okay. Do you recall shouting over or having one of your groups shout over uh, at Mr. Woodward, fuck you, Billy, fucking queer, fuck you, faggot? Fuck you, fucking queer. No, I did not have nobody shout. I did not have nobody shout. Did somebody shout that? Like that? In your presence? I do not know. You don't know? No, I don't know. Do I don't know things exactly that what everything was said that night. No, I don't. Are you saying that that wasn't? You were part of the group where that was being said? I don't remember when that was said, who said it, or how, or what was said. Do you recall around 1040 <clears throat> being part of a group where Gary Hembury shouted to the Woodward's house, come outside, bitch? No, I don't recall that. Were you present when people were shouting at the Woodward's house, eat more chicken? I do not. I don't recall when that was said. I don't know if I was standing there or not. Weren't you the person who, at that time, placed uh, standing next to Roger and Gary, shouting "military faggot"? Uh, the Woodward House. That. that was something that you all usually used as an insult toward Mr. Woodward, right? Uh, calling a military faggot, uh, deriding his military service. No, that's not. I don't remember. Badass army reject bitch. Remember that? No. Nope. Isn't it a fact that when you were said, think of snap that bone in the ass. He hasn't got the balls. And you said, when we get him to snap, we got his ass. You're actually the person who said that. Isn't that true? I don't remember that. Now, was it your testimony earlier that you weren't present when uh, people mooned the Woodward's house? I don't remember no mooning. You recall shouting out, it's a new movie, Four Cheeks to the Wind? No, I don't remember saying that. Do you recall <coughs> singing a little song around that time? Yeah, with his daughter will get over 25 days. Y'all ain't going to 
do it? Your answer, that's me. Question. You recall? No, I see where it's written. I don't recall exactly what it's, that's what I said. It's it. You recall saying it? That no. No. You recall whether or not the ink that was being referred to was mooning the house? No, I do not. You recall saying that then? No, I don't. See, line 17 and 18 refreshes your recollection. But I don't recall saying that. Now, a few moments ago, I asked you a question about singing the song about the daughter of 25, Deo. You yeah. refer to page 137. You recall page line 23, being asked about that, being asked, who is that? And you indicated, I don't know, but it sounded like me. That's what I said. What were you talking about? I don't remember. Okay. You didn't mean anything sexual by that, did you? No. You're referring to Mr. Woodward's daughter, right? I don't that's know what I was referring to. I don't know what was said. I don't remember. You're talking five, some five and a half years ago. You're trying to get me to remember every little word. I don't remember all this stuff. Sorry. Isn't it a fact that you attempted to provoke Mr. Woodward by making another sexually charged comment no. about his daughter? No. So what were you trying to do then? I don't exactly know. It was not that. Were you involved in discussions about getting or having a gun on the September? No. Not that I know. There was no gun to get. Nobody had a gun. Did Mr. Pickyar have an AK-47? I never seen it. Were you ever Facebook friends with Mr. Pickyar? I think so. Did you ever see a picture that Mr. Pickyar had posted on his Facebook page of him pointing an AK-47 at the camera? I think so. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like that at all? Did you 
associated with even something else. Without bangs, etc. I think the, the kids was banging on Sunday made a makeshift drum set or some some buckets or tins, I think. Well, this, did you hear any explosion type sounds? No, I don't. Did any kids make any explosive devices? No. Any homemade firecrackers or no. bombs or anything of that nature? Definitely no bombs. Okay. Were you ever present when anything of that nature was discussed by any of the kids? No. Okay. But my question specifically at, at 2330, do you hear, do you recall hearing a loud cracking shot like noise of people making some sort of comment about shot or shooting? No, I don't recall. Now, I was asking you earlier, and I'll, I'll refer you to page 171 about this. Uh, comment. What page? 171. This comment, come on, gang. Okay. You recall claiming that that was a comment about these kids wrestling? Yes, that's what I said, Dean. Okay. That's your recollection now? Oh, I don't remember, but that's, that's what I said at this time. I don't remember exactly what was said. Okay. <laughs> and one of the comments that you uh, recall is get it back. Do you recall that? No, I don't. Page 171, line 3. Oh, well, actually, it starts at 170. Line 170, 23. Okay. Recall hearing somebody say get it back or words of No, I don't recall. Did you ever hear anybody say the words, get a bat, or is that a bat? Come on, let's get up, let's go, in conjunction with a woman's shouting well, oh my god, they're going to do it. No, I do not. Don't recall hearing that at all. No, no, no. Okay. And again, I just want to confirm. Uh, if I understood your testimony. I think you were having some, that you had gone in to show some sort of lure to Justin. That That's I may have as I had. Okay. Now, isn't it a fact that that's the first time that you claimed that there was any conversation about a lure? Earlier hearing you talk about that at all? No, I don't remember that. I mean, this is what. This is what I remember now. Okay. But there absolutely may or may not have been a lure. Have you had some conversation with Justin since your testimony at the previous year? Yeah, but not about this. Okay. Did you discuss talking about Justin claiming you were talking about fishing? But me and him have been fishing since that last year, but we this is not something we sit around talking about. All right. And it is correct, I think I, have to, I just want to give you another opportunity to look at this. Uh, just blank back in. Uh, 2012. And how tall were you and how much did you weigh? Uh, about 10, 170. 170? Yes. How much you weigh now? <laughs> uh, 220 something. Yeah. I've gained a lot. Do you recall how big? Roger Pickett was. He was probably around 220, 225. Yeah. He was a pretty big boy. He was as big as 280? No, I don't think he was that big. 
But I mean, I don't know. How big was Gary Hemper? Probably 150. 150? Yeah. He's 200? No. Gary ain't never seen 200 in his life. Am I allowed to stand up for just a second? Did you just need a stretch, sir? Jim, my legs make sure to go to sleep. Don't move around. Yeah. Sir, have you had an opportunity to listen to the video, particularly the sequence of the shots uh, of your shooting, as you pick yours, as your memories? Yes, I've seen it. Now, if I understood your testimony about the sequence, is your claim uh, uh, your prior testimony was that you saw Mr. Picky were being shot, that he was shot once or twice, uh, well, tell you what, rather than me trying to remember what you said, why don't you tell me again what you believe the sequence of shooting was? What I remember is I was standing in front of the truck, and then I heard one shot, didn't know exactly what it was, and there was a second, and a third, and a fourth, and that's when I started feeling it. And then I think I was shot two or three more times. Then I started going down, and then I seen Gary come out. I'm trying to get back up. I seen Gary come out, and Billy shot him right up to him. Until he emptied the clip, and I heard the clip, the empty clip jump on the ground. I heard him reload it. He shot Gary, however many more times. He come back, shot at me four, five, or six more times, and then he shot Roger, and he came back, and then the gun was empty. That's the way I remember. Okay. Now, so what you're just saying, fighting about, is that it's your recollection that there's pauses some of the shots going back and forth between people. It was, it was, some feet apart. Yeah, there was a pause, but there was one bigger pause, and then another round burst, and there was there wasn't a whole bunch of pauses. There was like one major pause, and then the second round of burst. Isn't it the fact that the sequence of shots were one gunshot? 3747, second gunshot, 3751, that's 1237, 51. Third shot, 3757. 13 shots without a pause, 3802. Five shots at 3852. And 10 shots at 3855. I don't know. If that is correct, that would be inconsistent with your recollection. Of the sequence of shots, would it not? Sustain. Uh, this lure that is being discussed, what kind of lure is it? Is it a little bitty thing, big thing? What are we talking about? I don't know exactly which one I would have, but it was that like offshore bag, was pretty big one. Okay, when you say pretty big, Six, it is, something like that? Something, something, it probably been about 10 inches long. Well, about 10 inches long, so even bigger than if that's real big. So it would be something that would be hard to see. Oh no, you'd be able to see it. Okay. Uh, no further questions at this time. I would ask that you be kept for possible right across the examination. I, I just wanted to go ahead and I want to go back to the uh, shooting and I want to focus on uh, what you recall happening to you after you were shot. You understand what I'm asking you? In other words, you're there. The officer's there. Um, do you lose consciousness?